Hey there. For this video I've made a 1 24th scale vintage style vending machine. I've just got it sitting outside the diorama at the moment so you can have a good look at it. But uh, it's a nice simple piece and any couple of uh, things needed to make it. So I hope you get something out of this and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm using some printouts that I've got on some A4 paper. I use them as decals and also for templates. You might want a sewing machine inside your vending machine. I didn't, so I uh, just used the outside part for the template. I also uh, printed these ones out so I could choose what I would like to use for the interior. And the panels are optional as well if you're doing a more modern style of vending machine. I have two in case I make mistakes. And then I just cut it out with a piece of cardboard for the right size and then use my cardboard as a template for the foam. I'm using XPS foam for this because it's just a nice easy material to use. But you could probably use balsa wood. I just give it a very gentle sand so it'll make it porous and get it in line and nicely shaped. And here's a little sliver of balsa wood. I'm going to use it as a little front facing panel so I can make a window on it and the same template that I made for the back and just cut it out and that's my two pieces for the entire little project. I'm just going to mark out by putting pressure on each corner so I know exactly how big the window in the machine will be and then I'll just rule from point to point I'll just cut it out and then there's my little window done. The balsa wood is a little messy I've noticed when you're going against the grain it can be a little bit of a problem probably because my uh, blade was a little bit blunt. But That's the two pieces and that's basically the bulk of the work done. I just use this as a template again to mark out the inside where I'm going to make the impression. I use anything that's roughly the same size as the uh, the window and the the interior of the machine and just evenly push it down fairly hard just keep doing it over and over and over and it will compact the foam down just deep enough it doesn't have to be too deep because this is going to be an illusion of depth I did use a knife to cut around the edges as well just to help push it down a little bit more Nice square edges on the little tool as well that you use will really help push it nice and firmly down in the corners. Once this little face plate's on you can see the depth is doubled now. So it's probably about three, probably about three mil deep I would say. Which is plenty enough if you darken it once you've got the, the decal in there, it's quite good. I'll just pop them into a black and brown watered down acrylic wash just to stain them. It really saves on mucking around with paint and helps things look a bit aged and do make sure that you put the lid on properly first or you'll do something stupid like that. <laughs> and then I just pull them out and give them a nice drain. I do this with everything. I don't know why but it works so I do what works. I just cut the little pieces that I want off the actual printout because I don't want the whole thing. It'd be, you wouldn't just glue it on, it'd look weird. So just the little um, you know, panels and things. I'm deciding which uh, interior I would like to have. I reckon any of these look pretty good. The chip one's pretty good. I mean anything's good compared to having a sewing machine in a vending machine. I uh, would love to know why that's in there. That one's a nice one. I like this one. And just cut it out as evenly as possible and um, pop it in there. It's a little bit too big but I'd rather that than be too small. I don't want it sort of free floating around inside. <laughs> it fits well. <laughs> Normally I don't get anything to work properly but this one works so well I couldn't get it back out once I pushed it in there. <laughs> Got it. Just going to put a little bit of some black acrylic on the outside. It's not very uh, very shiny this one, it's pretty basic. 
flat black. I'm just trying to replicate the actual look of one of those old vintage kind of um, machines. From what I remember they did have uh, black backs on them. I'm using uneven amounts of black and brown together because I want to have a brown front facing panel but I don't want even paint because even paint makes things look unnatural when they're miniaturized so just a little bit of black here and there so it makes an unnatural sort of uneven little bit of a streak or what might look like green or whatever just pop some very thick water-based glue must be water-based otherwise it'll dissolve your foam and just put the decal in I can't believe I did this and it wasn't upside down because <laughs> normally everything I do for some reason turns it upside down but uh, I did look at it three times before I put it in there that's probably why using the same little stick just to really evenly put this in because the glue is so thick I can work with it for a while and it won't buckle um, but yeah I don't want to work with it too much it may get a little bit crinkled and ruin the illusion a tiny thin piece of perspex it's like the ones you get out of little picture frames it's just a nice little thin plastic piece for the the glass and before I do that though I'm going to put some of that same brown wash because I want to make a shadow all the way around the inside edging it kind of conceals the paper where it meets the foam but it also gives shadow to add more depth it's just that um, pulling it into the distance where I do that very light sort of brown wash and it must be a wash you can't just go putting black or brown paint on there it won't look like a shadow it'll look like a mark it really helps with distance you can see just that one little line down the side there making a massive difference everything I do is about light and shadow and that's where the trickery of miniaturization comes in it makes a massive difference doing something like this these are the little things that make it good I'm just going to put the little pieces on for the decals they're a little bit rough when I do this but it's not so bad and I'm going to use this pen this pen didn't work very well it was pretty pretty crummy but um, I'm just drawing in the lines that are it's meant to be silver trim on this but silver would be very stark and unnatural looking so I used white instead that's the thing about miniaturization as well you, um, imitating colors can often go awry so sometimes it's better to use something similar and a little flatter so it won't stand out too much because this didn't work very well I ended up using a larger cream colored pen but if I go to the inside like this and use this rule along the side I don't have to worry about it being too thick so just work from the inside like that and it, it worked out quite well it's very crude sort of stuff but it seems to work out in the end which is very pleasing I'm just going to glue on this little one I adhered this one to a little piece of tissue box just so it had that little extra bit of um, of depth with it and it's upside down <laughs> I had to check that about five times before I did that and I still nearly glued it on upside down after I'd done this piece too I, I weighed it down with a nice heavy steel uh, weight just to make sure it would be super flat so it doesn't have any kind of pulling or buckling as it dries you do want everything to be as flat as possible and I glued that one sideways around the wrong way <laughs> oh geez I don't know why I keep doing that just rolling across it just ironing it out and this little one the uh, little coin 
Return, I think it's what it's called. I used a, a very fine um, felt tip pen just to make shadows around the edge of these, just to give them that extra three-dimensional look so everything's not completely flat. I do this with everything. I try to make sure I draw in shadow. It's really important. If you're like me and accidentally got a little bit of black on the panels, you can just use a little bit of a white pen or pencil or cream or something and just cancel out any mistakes that you make. It's not about being excellent, it's about being able to fix mistakes at the end of the day. Because I make plenty of them, but I'm just good at covering them up. There's bits of wet glue still on this, it's not um, ready for presentation I suppose, but that's the whole thing done it was a nice quick easy thing and once you got that bit of plastic on the front the depth is fantastic and it really has the illusion of being a, a real little machine it looks really good and it's going to look great inside the uh, the roadhouse or the uh, the gas station there it is again outside i will be putting it inside eventually and gluing it down but it's a nice little piece i'll be making lots more like this for this diorama and even though once it's inside the building, it, you know, you'll have to sort of put your eye up against a window to have a good look at it. But it's all about making the pieces than, more than, you know, it is viewing them because they're just so much fun to make. Well, I hope you got something from this video and uh, I hope to see you next time. I feel like I'm spying on someone looking at it through the window like that. <gasps> That's the best I could do. I'm sorry. It is just so small. It's hard to get in there. <laughs>